when you first came to this track, you know, here at Road Atlanta, did it intimidate you? And do you feel that same way now? Because I've heard a lot of folks. Yeah, I mean, I would say <laughs> if, we're, if, we're, yeah, if we're sitting here in an honest conversation, you know, kind of bearing souls, for right. sure, I would say that um, Road Atlanta is an intimidating place. It, it always has been, and I think it always will be. And I think from the minute you roll out onto Road Atlanta, whether it's your first time or your hundredth time here, um, there's always a certain amount of respect that has to go into this place. And um, generally, I would say when you're talking respect of a track, that's because there is some sort of intimidation involved with that. And, you know, when, when you talk about, example, the American Le Mans series car here, the, the GT2 car or the GTE car, I guess now, um, when you come through turn 12, it's full throttle, um, you know, 100 and, 120 plus miles per hour. And it's not easy. It's just barely there so any small mistake is a is a big issue so if you don't respect that and don't plan for that then that's that's when bad things happen so you know someone with 10 years almost 12 years of experience racing here how do you account for drivers that are just coming on here for the first time do you give them a lot of room or you just run your race i mean you just run your race like a you know like i said luckily once you get once you get to this level Everybody is is good, okay. um, and it doesn't take it doesn't take anybody very long to come to grips. And I think that that's maybe one of the things that um, uh, that kind of is an oversight, right? For people who don't know the sport so well, who aren't in the sport that well, is how good everybody truly is, and how quickly people come to speed. You know, I mean, you kind of have when you really break it down over the course of a weekend, you have very little track time. And if it takes you an hour to come up to speed, that's an hour wasted You're of being behind. able to develop the car. <laughs> so you have five laps to be able to get yourself to grips with what you have. And that's what makes it hard. I mean, coming here, trying to be, you know, your fifth lap here needs to be about as good as any lap you're going to do. That's difficult. You mentioned here a moment ago about turn 12. Is that your favorite turn? No, that would okay. be my least favorite turn, I would say. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. What, what would be your favorite turn? Um, I like five. I like the five, six, seven uh, complex, the whole section back there. And, and what makes it so um, memorable for you? For me, f the five, six, seven uh, complex is cool because of the way the, the lay of the land is over there. I like that that five is uphill, that there's a lot of grip, that you have to you know enter that corner Turn five is all about your approach to turn five and, and setting up the approach appropriately to help you carry more speed across the center of turn five and knowing what you need to do there and, and you know, literally the inches difference that it makes for the car to be good there and the inches it takes for the car to be bad. So um, that whole section is that way, uh, six and seven included. So that's what's cool about that section for me. All right. So you drive for, you know, Falcon Tire. Tell me how that relationship got started. And, you know, it sounds like it's been a good one so far. For me, it's been a great relationship. And, I, you know, I would hope it, that they would say the same and assume they would. Otherwise, I didn't think I'd <laughs> be sitting here saying, exactly. you know, having this conversation. But it actually started on a phone call and being at the right place at the right time. Um, I hear that a lot. I it's, do. I mean, it's the truth. You know, I mean, anyone who sits and tells you that that motorsports is not about being in the right place at the right time is is wrong. Now you have to do the best you can with the opportunities sure. you're presented. Otherwise, you don't stay around long. But um, basically, what happened for me is uh, there were big rumors that Falcon were coming into ALMS with an increased effort program. That they were going to do it with a Porsche RSR, and I picked up the phone and called the marketing guy, um, who at the time was a gentleman by the name of Mark Richter over at Falcon, and said, "Hey, here's who I am. Here's what I do. I'm interested in your program. Is there anything I can, anything I can do to kind of uh, talk you into at least looking at me?" And his response was kind of like, "Yeah, I know your name. I know who you are. Um, we're having driver conversations tomorrow morning, actually." I'll throw your name in and, and we'll see what happens. And I didn't hear anything back for two weeks and I thought, wow, that was kind of a waste of my time, <laughs> wasn't it? That conversation didn't really go anywhere. And 
literally two weeks and a day later, I got a call from him and said, hey, we're going to do a test. Uh, we want you to come out. We, we are considering you as one of our guys. Um, you know, would you be interested? And at the time, it, I was, it was like right before Daytona. And I'm like, well, I go to Daytona on Wednesday, and you want me to test on Tuesday. And I thought, I don't know if I can make it. And then I thought, well, you can't really pass up this opportunity. Yep. So I flew Monday out to uh, California, tested on Tuesday, red-eyed from California to Daytona to be on track on Wednesday. And um, two days later, they called, and we put the deal together, and we've been together ever since. Great way to go into a Daytona week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's we're kind of talking about, you know, ALMS and speaking about the 2012 American ALMS, you know, series, and that's obviously, you know, presented by Tequila Patron. How's your season going thus far? Is it where you want to be? No, no, okay. it's not where we want to be, unfortunately. Um, we had a really good year last year, and we won two races, and uh, we had a bunch of top fives. One of the top fives was actually at Petit. Um, you know, we won Baltimore, we won Mid-Ohio. And <clears throat> we knew it was, it's always a struggle in ALMS to win races, to win championships, sure. to, to even be in top fives. So you knew it was going to be a tough year, but our goal this year was certainly to be um, higher in the standings than where we were last year. And that meant, you know, um, you know placing ourselves higher in manufacturer's points, higher in uh, driver's points. And we haven't been able to really convert on that just yet. What's the difference, do you think? Can you pinpoint it? I mean, I'm sure you're you trying to find it yeah, every week. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you, I can give you the, the answer that, that nobody wants to hear and say, well, if we knew what it was, then we could fix it. Right. But that's not the truth because we have an idea what it is and we have an idea what we need to address. Um, but it's just such a process to get there. I mean, things don't happen overnight, you know, and unfortunately, um, we've done some testing, and in this testing, we've found things that have been way better, um, and we just haven't been able to apply those things to move forward at the moment. Now, luckily, we're still super early in the season, and if you and I would have had the same conversation this time last year, I'd be saying the same thing, yet we went on to win two races, you know, a couple top fives, and so on and so forth. So the season is, for us, nowhere near lost, mm -hmm. um, but we need, to, we need to start our upward swing now. But I think that's what some people don't understand, is that this is a process, and it's an ongoing process, no matter if you're doing well, or you know, if you're not running as strong as you like, it's a continual process of evaluation, oh. making the adjustments, and that's what separates really the great from the good. No, that's exactly right. And I mean, I think when you look at a program like Falcon Tire, um, it's a little bit different than a lot of other programs that have come through, being as it is sponsored by a tire manufacturer and com completely operated by a tire manufacturer. And what I mean by that is, you're going to have ups and you're going to have downs and you know to make progress sometimes you have to go one step forward and two steps back is that hard um it is hard. hard it is hard and it's um, hard for everybody involved right i mean mm -hmm. it's hard for the tire manufacturer the team the drivers the crew because everyone everyone from upper management all the way all the way down puts in a ton of effort so that two steps back is tough but as long as you continue to take another one forward and another one forward and another one forward, it's all to a greater goal. And I think right now we're kind of two steps forward and we fell one back. So that's a good pattern to change from, from the one forward and two back. 